Mr. Rainsy, I have to start with the big question here. Do you plan to return to Cambodia despite the threat of near certain arrest when you get there? Definitely. We will go back to Cambodia. It is not only our right, but it's our duty to go back to our country, to our home country. How soon could we see you go, go back to Cambodia and how do you plan to get there? There have been a number of logistical challenges so far. Things can change because we are combining internal pressure with external pressure on the Hun Sen regime so that they will let us in in a peaceful way. We will go back to Cambodia. Mr. Rainsy, talk me through your decision to return to Cambodia at this time, because I know you set a, a self deadline almost of the 9th of November, and we are having this, this European Union decision that we will hear about on Tuesday about the preferential trade agreement. Um, and you, you talked about internal and external pressure. So is this a strategic time then for you to go back to Cambodia in the hope that you might be able to leverage some of that for some change? Yes, very much so. Had the Thai government not prevented me from going back to Cambodia, I would have been in Cambodia already by the 9th of November. But now there is another important date when the European Union is going to release their report and make their decision whether to suspend the system of trade privileges or not. And this is a very powerful leverage to put pressure on the Hun Sen regime to restore democracy. So, Mr. Rainsy, then let me ask you the question again. When do you expect to return to Cambodia? It can be any time because the population is still mobilized. Our network is ready and the international pressure is mounting. So we are at a turning point. And I would say at the tipping point. You talk about this tipping point. Um, it's also a tipping point potentially for the CNRP. I know um, well, Kem Sokha has now been released from house arrest, but he is still facing restrictions and isn't allowed to participate in politics. I know you and he have had some differences of opinion in the past. So where do you see your role in the party now? We would call for a popular uprising. If Hun Sen does not restore democracy, then there will be international sanction. Factories will be closed. Workers, hundreds of thousands of workers will lose their job. Then we will call on those factory workers and their families to rise up. It is because of Hun Sen that they lose their job. If we don't do anything, they will lose their job. So we have to do our best to preserve the jobs of hundreds of thousands of workers and the livelihoods of their families. When you say you're calling for a popular uprising, then, is there a concern that there could be violence? We have seen this crackdown on the part of the government, and now you're asking potentially thousands of people to come out onto the street, and, and there has been a lot of violence in Cambodia in its history. Could there be a, a civil war? No. We will follow the example of the Filipino people in 1996, uh, when there was a peaceful, popular uprising, forcing the dictator at that time, Ferdinand Marcos, to flee the country. I think this can happen in Cambodia with Hun Sen also fleeing the country under the pressure from the crowd. Let me ask you this then, Mr. Rainsy. At a time of great tension in Cambodia, you faced criticism from some people who have questioned your courage about not returning from self-imposed exile and, and you still haven't yet managed to make it back to the country. What would you say to those people? I did return, as promised, on the 19th July 2013. It was a successful return and I was welcomed by hundreds of thousands of uh, people and we made significant gain at the election that took place uh, 10 days later. Had the election being honest and transparent, free and fair, we would have won already. So in the meantime, the popular discontent against the Hun Sen regime has increased. So the people are really waiting for a change, a positive change, a democratic change. They are waiting for a signal. The signal will be the return of the CNRP, the opposition leadership. Once we are in the country, there will be a popular uprising. We call on the army not to shoot at us and to turn their gun against the dictator. 
So this will be really the tipping point. How much has that changed things? Has that given you some leverage in terms of encouraging and perhaps Western nations to want, who might want to curtail Chinese influence in the region to maybe get a little bit more proactive about what's happening in Cambodia? Yes, this is a real source of concern. Cambodia is becoming a Chinese colony. For the first time, we see China sending hundreds of thousands of settlers. They are not ordinary tourists. They have come to Cambodia to stay, to settle there. So we are very worried. And they come, they bribe the authorities to take our land, to take our jobs. They behave as if they were the master of the land. So the Cambodian people are very upset. And on top of that, the Hun Sen government have given China a lot of facilities. And those facilities can be turned into military facilities overnight, very quickly. So it is not only a source of concern for economic reason, but uh, it is a source of tension in the region. This can threaten peace and stability in the region. It is why the issue of restoring democracy in Cambodia and the issue of maintaining Cambodia's neutrality, preventing China from building military capacity in Cambodia are interrelated. Hun Sen has chosen to be on China's side. This is a danger, not only for Cambodia, but for the whole region. So restoring democracy in Cambodia means also ensuring Cambodia's neutrality and independence and preventing any foreign power from building any military facility in Cambodia. Mr. Rainsy, you're talking about increasing regional tensions there. You're currently in Malaysia, and Malaysia and Cambodia are both, both members of ASEAN, and ASEAN has a policy of non-interference in each other's affairs. But I see that Malaysia has detained a number of, of opposition members from your party um, in the last few days at the request of Phnom Penh. Do you think that ASEAN as a body is doing enough to pressure Cambodia? Things are changing. I think the values of democracy, of human rights, are being promoted more and more clearly by a number of ASEAN countries. I'm thinking of Malaysia, I'm thinking of Indonesia. So I think things are changing. And I'm very grateful to the Malaysian government for allowing the CNRP leadership to be on Malaysia's soil even though this makes uh, Hun Sen very angry, but they have made it clear that uh, Malaysia is an independent country and Malaysia wants to uphold universal values uh, of uh, human rights and democracy. And Malaysia set a good example when the, the opposition won the last election. This gave a lot of hope to the Cambodian people be because of the similarities mm. between the two countries. Let me ask just one last question then to Mr. Rainsy. At this point, do you, you personally, having been out of the country for all these years and potentially returning very soon, do you feel hopeful for your country at this stage? Yes, very much so, because there is not only the issue of restoring democracy in Cambodia, but the issue of China's expansionist policy. With democracy restored in Cambodia, Cambodia will be a factor of peace and Cambodia will not allowed uh, China to build any military facilities. I think this uh, consideration has opened the discussion about Cambodia. And we will leave it there for now. It's a story we'll be continuing to watch very closely. Thank you to all of our guests, Sam Rainsy, Graham Ongweb and Benjamin Zawad.